Hey there, everybody. This is Moshang. Thank you so much for joining me for this look at uh, creating sweeps and swells in Reason's Thor synth. Now, the kind of thing we're talking about is, uh, let me play it for you in isolation uh, over here. Uh, let me find it. Where is it? Uh, there we go. Play it. And this kind of thing is very common in uh, electronic music production to signal a change in the music, you know, from maybe from your chorus into your uh, into your bridge or, or what have you, to, to signal that something is about to happen in the music, that there's going to be a change. And also very easy to do in the Thor synth. So what I'm going to do, first off, is just delete this one that I already have and then start from scratch and delete the track and device. There we go, delete all in group, it's gone. And create a new one. So we go to create instrument, that was a right click, and it's Thor Polysonic Synthesizer. Try saying that five times in a row quickly. And then I'm going to also create, uh, you know, a two-bar uh, two little section where I can write a note, as I've done there. I think it's a bit long. Let me just bring it back, uh, snap it back to two bars. And now when I play it in isolation, it will sound like this. And that's with a default sound that comes with a Thor. So what I want to do, first off, is show the programmer. Right-click and um, initialize the patch. And what that will do is give us a single analog oscillator, which at the moment sounds like this. We'll hear it fades out towards the end, and for our swell, that's not going to do uh, do the trick. So what I'm going to do is, over on the amplitude uh, envelope, I'm going to bring up the decay and sustain, and do drop the release and attacks way down. Now you hear it will keep, uh, you know, sustaining without uh, dropping in volume. <laughs> like so. And a little bit of decay that you still hear over there, that's coming from the filter envelope, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So first thing to create the swell is to go to our LFO1 and here where you can see the different waveform shapes, I'm going to step through one, two, three, there we go, I think it's four actually, the fourth one, this uh, sawtooth. And you can see it, uh, you know, it sweeps upwards and then drops down to, to the beginning and that's exactly what we need. So go over here to your uh, to your uh, modulation matrix under source, create a new uh, LF01. The destination over here that will be our uh, oscillator one pitch. There we go, and bring the amount up to 100%. Now let's quickly listen to that. Oh, very interesting. Except that now it's going really quickly, and I would uh, prefer the whole sweep to last for two bars. So what I'm going to do is go to our LF01 pick tempo sync bring it back, you'll see now it's on uh, half a bar right now. 4-4, four, four, that would be one bar, and 2-1, uh, that's two bars. So now you should hear it uh, sweep upwards for two bars. That's the tickets. Not sounding particularly interesting right now, but uh, we're going to change that now by adding a second uh, a second LFO. Have a look here, uh, LFO 2, the default settings over here, that's, that's going to be fine for now. I'm going to create another source here, that will be LFO2, and I'm going to send that to the same destination, it's also oscillator 1 pitch, and uh, I'm going to bring up the amount, not all the way to 100 like LFO1, but uh, to about 50 over here, and that should give us an interesting result, let's have a listen. Nice, so uh, LFO1 is still doing the sweep upwards and then LFO2 is uh, modulating it, making this kind of a uh, zigzagging uh, sound as it goes upwards. That's pretty nice, but uh, I think we can make it more interesting than that. So the next thing I want to do is use our same LFO1 to modulate the rate of LFO2 so that as it sweeps upwards that uh, squiggly little bit is going to get faster and faster. So I'm going to create another LFO1 as source and send that to LFO2 rate over here and bring up the amount all the way to 100. Play with these amounts and uh, you will get uh, different results, of course. All of it's interesting and usable, so uh, don't worry about it too much. Nice, that's sounding good. 
So uh, you can leave it at that, uh, but let's make it a slightly bit more more interesting by adding another oscillator. Um, I'm going to add a, a noise, oops, a noise oscillator. There we go. White noise should be fine for now. And if we just follow the signal path, the oscillator is going into the mixer over here, and from the mixer it's going up into the low pass filter. But now our second oscillator is not selected, so it's not being sent to the low pass filter. So you're going to hear nothing. Just enable it over there. And now we should be able to hear it. Let's listen. Good. You can hear actually the the uh, photo envelope that I left on before, uh, making quite a big difference to uh, to that noise uh, to that noise source. So I'm just gonna make it the same as the amplitude uh, envelope. And for our final trick, I'm gonna use the same LFO one uh, to modulate the low pass uh, photo frequency. So I'm gonna do that. It was photo one frequency and bring that up to 100 as well. Let's give it a listen. Good, and uh, finally, uh, what can we do finally? Oh, how about adding some uh, effects uh, delay and tempo sync for now, and uh, now we can listen to this uh, in the context of the track. <laughs> There you go, lots of fun to be had with this. So, uh, you know, try different things, try different uh, waveforms, see what they do, experiment, and uh, whatever you come up with, it's going to be usable and uh, it's going to be unique because you made it. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and uh, thanks so much for watching and join me again next time.